Now, both of these tropical waves we've been tracking have a high chance for development. Heavy rain is coming to the Caribbean, and more models are coming online that suggest one of these waves could be in play for the United States. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We'll also take a look in the long range to see if this is the Atlantic explosion for the second half of the season, just like what we saw last year. I'd love to know your thoughts. This is a super complex steering pattern. We'll break that all down. We'll take a look at the models going forward, but I'd love to know where you're tuning in from and your thoughts on the situation. Post that in the comments. There are the two waves officially designated as INVEST. This is 93L. We get the fancy computer models. The 93L is out in the central Atlantic. That's the one that could be heading towards Bermuda. And then the one further to the southwest, this is 94L. And this is the one that we need to pay attention to in the Caribbean, the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, and then even parts of the southeast to mid-Atlantic of the United States. The steering currents are super whacked. We're going to break all that down again, but those are our two tropical waves. You see the highlight there. The shaded areas are from the Hurricane Center. Those are where they expect the development to occur. I first want to talk about the Caribbean timeline here for the heavy rain because 94L, the disturbance that's northeast of the Caribbean, it's going to skirt and bring some heavy rain before it has its opportunity to develop. So this is later on Tuesday night, and you see it just kind of skirting there. The yellows and the oranges indicate the super heavy rain. So tomorrow, Wednesday into Thursday, some heavy rain coming to the Virgin Islands, into Puerto Rico, into the northern side of the Dominican Republic in Haiti. You see that going through Thursday. This is now early on Friday, 4 o'clock in the morning on Friday. We have some very heavy rainfall pushing towards the Turks and Caicos. A little gusty wind as well. And you see here, this is the European rendition. That circulation start to form as it gets towards the Turks and Caicos as we enter the weekend. So that's going to be Saturday at 8 o'clock. Any cruises out there, certainly if you live there, want to keep tabs on the forecast. There is a lot of outcomes. So even what I just showed you is not set in stone. In the short term, through about the Dominican Republic, looks like uh, it's going to stay on that forecast track. But I want to show you some of the ensembles now. So this looks a little different. We talked about in previous videos that the United States was in play because of a cutoff low, which we will get to in just one second. I have a fancy graphic for you to kind of highlight what's going on. But here are the two distinct areas that we are watching. These lines out here, and I know there's a lot, but all these lines, let me change the color. We're going to change it to blue. All of these lines out here, that's 93L. That's the one in the central Atlantic. But look at this. This is 94L, the one that's in the Northeast Caribbean right now. Some members do still take it out, but there's a lot that bend it back to the coastline. And there's a reason for that, but there's a lot of members that want to take it just kind of due north of the Bahamas and then maybe back into the Carolinas. Florida is still in play a little bit, but with the setup, if the United States is going to be impacted, I would favor a little bit further to the north at this time. But this is a super, super complex steering flow. I want to show you the models first. There's a method of my madness, and then we'll get into the breakdown. This is the GFS ensembles, a little less, um, a little low uh, members coming to the west. There's a few. There's the eastern wave that's out in the central Atlantic. A lot of them want to curve. There is still the closer one to the Caribbean. GFS ensembles, a little more split. European, a lot of them have them online. I want to take you, though, to the Europe. Or this is the Google DeepMind AI with the GFS background state or the environmental conditions. Uh, this one wants two strong hurricanes out there. This is the one that's in the central Atlantic. So, again, watching for Bermuda. And then this is the one that's kind of skirting across the Caribbean again. And notice, though, how the Google DeepMind has the center, or kind of center, much further south than the European. I will say that in reality, as of tonight, as of this recording, about 9 o'clock Eastern time, the mid-level center of the thing is pretty far south. So the Google DeepMind on board with the further south solution, skirting Cuba, coming up towards the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas, and then kind of flinging out in this direction, not taking it to the Carolinas. Some bring it on uh, onshore in Southeast Florida. 
So those are the ensembles in the AI models. I wanted to show you that first because I wanted to show you just how big the spread was. And I'm going to show you why. Of course, forecasting tropical stuff is always difficult. It's always a challenge. It's even more of a challenge this go around because of the two waves that are close by in proximity with each other. So not only do we have that, but we have this cutoff low, which we typically don't have at the same time we're tracking tropical systems. So 93L, the one that's out in the central Atlantic, likely going to skirt around the Bermuda High and get on out of here. But its proximity to Invest 94L that's skirting the Caribbean, it could do a couple of things. It could deter development altogether. It could kind of push it further west. It could absorb it and pull it further east. So there's a lot that is unknown due to the interaction that they are likely going to have to each other. When there are two systems in that proximity together, it's virtually impossible to know how their interaction is going to shake out in the short term and then certainly five to seven to ten days out. The other thing that's complicating things is that upper low that you see spinning over the deep south and southeast corner of the United States. Typically, when there's a trough there, it's a slam dunk. This is heading out to sea. But what happens is models are forecasting this upper low to pinch off from the normal west-east jet stream flow and cut off and just kind of park itself there. If that happens, that's going to help to kind of grab the further west storm which in this case is 94L, and tug it closer to the coast. But depending upon how exactly it's oriented, when it cuts off, where exactly is, we'll determine, okay, does it roll maybe closer to Florida? Does it come closer to the Carolinas and Virginia? Or does it stay just offshore? So there's a lot to be ironed out. The main two things, the interaction between the two storms, increase the uncertainty big time. And the fact that that low is cut off also increases things. So this is going to cause a lot of headaches in the forecasting world over the next couple of days. So that's just, I, I wanted to show you the models first and then break down why they're kind of all over the place because the models that are biting onto that cutoff lower are, are going to be further to the west. The models that think that the center of the storm right now, which there is none, is a little bit further to the north, are going to be further to the east. There's a lot to watch over the next couple of days. Here to help us, though, are the brave men and women of the Hurricane Hunters. And these missions into Invest 94L, that's the one that's closer to the Caribbean, start tomorrow. The Air Force is going to kick this off at 11 a.m. Eastern Time to give us some great data. Then Wednesday, early in the morning, 1.30 in the morning, that small plane in between the Air Force C-130 on the bottom and the NOAA P-3 up top, that Gulf Stream is going to fly at about forty to 45,000 feet around the storm. That one is going to be critical because we're going to know and learn about the environment around the storm. That data goes into the models, and we should get better data to help forecast these things. So the job that these men and women are about to do, it's always critical, but it's going to help us big time. And then the third mission into 94L, that comes from the NOAA P-3, the big plane up top with the tail Doppler radar and all that stuff, all the bells and whistles that we need. That goes in Wednesday, 4 o'clock in the morning. So better data, fresh data is coming when it comes to these twin waves. More importantly, though, 94L is what most of us would be concerned with. Again, we're watching 93L for Bermuda. But that one's a little more certain because it's likely just going to round the Bermuda high. Hey, Gabrielle's still out there. It's a hurricane, and we do have hurricane watches out for the Azores right now. It's a Category 3 hurricane. It still looks fairly healthy. I mean, this is pretty wild to see a hurricane like this in the north central Atlantic. I mean, here's Bermuda. Let me get, it's, get the island away from my head so you can see exactly where this is. I mean, it's out there. Our waves are down there. There are the two tropical waves we're tracking, and then Gabrielle's just chilling way up there. The Azores are going to be watching again for potential hurricane impacts over the next couple of days. They're highlighted, the Azores are, if I have anybody tuning in, in that purple color, that pink color, that's the hurricane watch. And you see most of the Azores, especially the northwest side of the islands, are completely within the cones where landfall is possible from a Category 1 storm. 
Friday morning. Conditions will likely start to deteriorate later on Thursday night. Look at this, though. We're talking about tropical storm in Spain and Portugal. Like over the weekend. That's pretty crazy. So early heads up if I happen to have anybody tuning in from Europe, Portugal, Spain, even Eastern Africa could get in on the moisture. I mean, that's like full circle stuff. It's wild. It came from Africa, and it's kind of doing a loop-to-loop across the Atlantic around the Bermuda High. So some wild stuff when it comes uh, to that storm. Okay, I talked earlier in the video that I would have an update on the long range. And here we go. This is from the Climate Prediction Center. They put these out. There's a little peach highlight, October 1st to October 7th. That's in a week from now. This is two weeks out, October 1st to October 7th. Greater than 20% shot. It's really not the right home about. And then this is the interesting thing here. Going into the second week of October, there's just a greater than 20% shot. There is nothing concrete. There is no hard signal from the Central American gyre, which you would expect. And there's really nothing that crazy either rocking off of Africa. So behind these two waves, like what we had last year, there's not a concrete signal that we're going to keep the second half of hurricane season in high gear, thankfully. The eastern Pacific is rocking again. There's likely another wave that's going to develop there the second week of October. But the question is, does the MJO come over Central America, force it up, get the gyre started, and spit out a storm? I don't know that it does. And the one thing, I know there were comments on last night's video. Oh, the GFS shows it. Oh, yeah, I think GFS is on something. I mean, when is it on something? But in terms of its getting the MJO coming through, its rising motion anomalies were whack, and therefore it had like millions of storms basically pop up through the middle and latter stages of October. I don't think that's going to happen because... It's just the only thing suggesting that we do get a meatier, beefy MJO Paul sliding through. And that would be awesome because it does look like things might shut down the third week of October. So we're keeping our fingers crossed, of course, that if we can dodge these two waves that are out there now, and it certainly looks like we're going to dodge one, maybe we shut her down. That'd be awesome. Obviously, they have a highlight there. There's a greater than 20% shot. So we watch. It tis the season for those gyre storms. We don't like the middle of October in the Gulf at all. Something we watch. But again, no concrete signal. Okay, if you're still with me, I appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing. I mean, you made it this far. We'd love to have you join the team. Love to get your storm reports when we're tracking weather live. And would love to get your thoughts on this situation that we're getting ourselves into over the next couple of days. Again, I hate taking the cop out of, okay, I don't know. I like to take a solution, given the data that I have, and then die on that forecast hill. Believe me, I hate it. This one's hard because there's no way to know how these guys are going to interact out there in the Atlantic. And then, okay, whatever's left as they move towards the islands, how where's that upper low? And how does it inter- interact with that? Degree of difficulty, about as high as you can get in the tropical forecasting world. Alrighty, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you soon.